Welcome to a live episode of Surviving the Survivor. We bring you the best guests in all of true crime. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Here's your host, Emmy Award-winning broadcaster, Joel Waldman. What's up, STS Nation, and welcome to this breaking news edition of STS, the podcast that promises to bring you the very best guests in all of true crime. And uh, we are coming to you tonight. I'm just going to switch my microphone settings here. Should be able to hear me a whole lot better right now. Uh, There is breaking news, and I have to be very, very, very careful here. We have two independent sources, two independent sources telling Surviving the Survivor this evening that a short time ago, Donna Adelson, the matriarch of the family, was arrested reportedly at an airport, reportedly trying to leave the country. These reports are not confirmed. I want to stress that, are not confirmed. But we have two independent sources, and that is typically the benchmark for traditional media to go with a story, which is why I chose to do this this evening, and it's not without some trepidation. Uh, Steve Cohen behind the scenes is continuing to make calls to try to corroborate this, try to confirm it. Uh, We presume that if this arrest did in fact happen, that Donna Adelson was probably trying to leave from her home, which is where I am in the Miami area. So the COE has been scouring Miami-Dade County's public record site for Uh, people who have been admitted into custody, into the jail system, and are trying to confirm that Donna Adelson was, in fact, arrested this evening trying to leave the country. Again, two independent sources are telling us this. And in addition to that, they are telling us that she was with Harvey Adelson at the time of her arrest, Harvey Adelson was reportedly let go. Again, just to be as clear as day, these are unconfirmed reports right now, but they are coming from two incredibly strong sources. These are not people that I would not rely on. Let's put it that way. And they are hearing it from separate sources. So once again, To reiterate, uh, KCL tuning in, almost 2,000 watching, STS is fired up, Donna Adelson arrested. I want to caution everyone. These are unconfirmed reports. These are two independent sources with great knowledge about this case telling us this separately. And I agonized with Meve Moen about going on air. Uh, There were some tweets out there already, a lot of noise out there already. So I wanted to just inform our audience of what was happening at this very moment. The minute we can 100% undeniably confirm it, which hopefully we can do during the course of the show tonight, we will do that. Of course, we are joined by a very familiar face. That is Tim Jansen, our Timothy Jansen, who you saw on the most recent episode of 2020 about the Dan Markell murder. He was just on this past Friday night. And you've got Katie Monkman Hyam, Katie Cooley, the one and only joining us. Uh, She reached out to me, I think after seeing or hearing something herself. And I said, uh, we're going to be very careful with this. And we are going to take it a step at a time. T. Everson, really hope this is true. On um, the COE, if you can help me with some of the comments, uh, please do that. Uh, someone is asking if it was Miami International. The truth is, at this moment, we know an incredibly small, infinitesimal amount. The only thing we know right now is that two independent sources who don't talk to each other necessarily are telling us the exact same thing and they are both very well-respected people. Without further ado, Tim Jansen, what do you make of this news, assuming it can be confirmed at some point in the very near future? Um, well, I received the information. I didn't believe it was true. Um, but the source is really, really good. 
Um, apparently, Harvey and Donna were on her way at the airport, and Donna was taken into custody. Harvey was not taken into custody. Um, this can happen several ways. She could have been put on a no-fly list, and so she may not have been being surveilled. But if she was on a no-fly list and she comes through and gives her ID, then the local police will be notified and they will take her into a room. They'll call either the feds or the state. Um, we're trying to confirm if it was Miami International Airport or Miami Airport. Don't know if she was leaving the country or just flying domestic. Um, but the source was pretty adamant that what was happening was happening and occurring and that Harvey was with her. Uh, Marmon Chua just said, is it confirmed? And I can tell you, it is not confirmed. These are two independent sources telling us this. You'll probably hear me say that a million more times tonight. I saw another comment that said clickbait, and that person can buzz right off because the people following this case, everyone is now talking about it. Um, we got, again, these independent sources telling us this. We wanted to come on and let you know in real time what we were hearing, which is once again that a short time ago, Wendy Adelson was um, was arrested, Donna, presumably. Donna, you said, you said I'm sorry, Wendy. Donna, Donna, excuse me. Thank you, Tim. Donna Adelson was arrested, presumably trying to leave the country. And as you just heard Tim say, she was with her husband, Harvey Adelson, who was not taken into custody. And we are trying to confirm this. Um, Yo, I don't know if we know she was leaving the country or if she was at the airport getting on a flight. You know, she could have got on a flight to fly somewhere else. But I don't know that. I haven't heard that. This this is not confirmed. But I'm telling you, the sources are, are very strong on the arrest. And, and that and the she's in custody, and that she is in custody right now, somewhere. And that is what we are trying to nail down right now. Pretty lucky, Taro. I was driving past Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale Airport an hour ago. I said to myself, "When are they going to arrest Donna?" Got home, saw this, got chills. True story. Don't doubt it at all. Katie, cool lady. Um, no one has been, you know, as invested in this story as you have, arguably. Um, what are your thoughts? And keep in mind, this is unconfirmed. Um, these are just these two independent sources telling us this this evening. Well, first of all, I had just crawled into bed and I was talking to my husband and kind of filling him in on like what's the next thing to come and just basically saying, I think Donna is the next person to come. I went to set my alarm on my phone and saw a notice from Fancy Fiction that she'd been arrested. So immediately, you know, jumped straight up. Um, so that was pretty bizarre, a moment. Um, I'm, I'm not surprised if it's true. I'm not surprised because as I've been saying all along, they've been teed up for Donna, you know, after Charlie's trial. I mean, I, I wouldn't know how much more they would need to do to get, um, you know, a case on Donna. And so, you know, or how much more they would need. I mean, it's the, the case against Charlie is kind of very similar to a case against Donna from the way that I see it. So, you know, why not just ride that momentum? They, ha they had a guilty verdict unanimous within three hours, actually less than three hours. If you consider their lunch break in there. And, and so by the way, I'm, I'm just not to interrupt Katie, but I'm now hearing from a third source, a very, 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 very well-placed source uh, that, he is hearing the same thing through his own people uh, that Donna Adelson was arrested. So uh, unless something is afoot here, this is now the third person uh, who is, this person is incredibly well tied in um, to what is going on in the state of Florida, uh, knows this case inside and out and is confirming to me now that he has heard the same thing that Donna Adelson was taken into custody but let me caution everybody. I was in news for many years and all three people could be wrong and you guys will all hate me and I will take hell for this. But um, like I said, we haven't confirmed it and we wanted to come on because there is so much noise out there right now to let you know what we were dealing with behind the scenes, which is hearing these now three sources 
um, uh, these three unconfirmed reports, these independent sources, three now telling us that Donna Adelson uh, was just arrested. Sonny M, $10 super sticker. Tim, please don't represent Donna. A++ to Joel, Tim, and Katie. I, I just want to caution everyone. Everyone's loving us tonight, but you might be hating us all tomorrow um, if the story doesn't pan out. But again, I wanted to uh, fill you guys in and let you know uh, the, the good thing about not being traditional media is we've got a little more leeway. And um, But I have to say, even in traditional media, two sources usually make a story. Three sources, they're going to run with it. And um, I now have three independent, very well-respected sources telling me this information. So all three of these people would all have to be getting bad information from the three, from whoever those three people are hearing this from. Um, but we yet have uh, to confirm this, uh, the COE behind the scenes, as well as Meve Moen, trying to do exactly that. We're trying to get a potential mugshot. And, um, you know, if she's booked in, we would get that. We're also looking to get Jackie Pulverary uh, on the show momentarily. She spent time behind bars. She's done some of our shows. She's a former inmate, and she could walk us through the process. Uh, she's supposed to join momentarily about what would happen if, in fact, she was arrested and she's now being booked into either the Miami-Dade County Jail, the Broward Jail. Those are the two closest jails uh, to here. But um, Tim Jansen, hopefully – we are uh, correct about this and the information is good. How are you feeling about it right now, Tim? Um, I feel pretty good. I had doubts and um, I was told by the person I trust a great deal that um, it's real, uh, that it's happened. And it was, this has been less than an hour and a half now um, that this apparently happened at an airport. Um, I couldn't believe it when I was notified. I didn't think it was real either. Um, and I asked, are, are you sure? Are you sure? And I feel confident. And then I guess you got another source saying it. And now you have a third source saying it. Um, it's not unexpected, really, after what the trial showed. And the, the trial opened up all the recordings and all the evidence against Donna to the public, to the community. Because Mac Bonner was trial, they didn't play all those tapes. They didn't show us everything they had. Now they put this all out there. And now the whole public was clamoring, why hasn't Donna been arrested? So all I know is what it's not confirmed. Um, it hopefully will be con confirmed if it's true. If it's not, we all owe a great apology to Donna and her family. Um, but the sources are impeccable sources, very, very impeccable. And now it's three sources. We I have a question for Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before you go, Katie, Abby Tahaha, good friend of the show. We won't ever hate you. Maybe you, Abby, but uh, a lot of other people will. And this is uh, we're we're skating on thin ice. So if you think that I'm not nervous bringing you this live, uh, you got me wrong because uh, I'm going to need Pepto myself till this is confirmed. Um, the COE is going to have to order it in. Um, here's this uh, super sticker. Kathy, it's Alex, your IG friend. I'm crying. Finally, justice. Uh, you obviously know this person. I just mm -hmm. want to reiterate to Alex and Katie Cool Lady and everyone else, this we went live with this because there's a lot of noise and we have three independent sources and they're about as good a source, all three of them, as you can get. One of them, no offense, the other two sources is absolute top tier, um, totally um, linked in to uh, what is going on in the state of Florida and uh, that person, too, has confirmed to us this arrest. Uh, but we will know for sure, hopefully soon, the shame and a J. We got you, Joel. I'm going to need that, but I'm going to need my Pepto as well. Uh, <laughs> Katie, your question for Tim Jansen. And then I got a few things I'm going to have to add here. And then hopefully Jackie gets on. We can ask her about the booking process. But go ahead, Katie. Okay, Tim. What I want to know is more about like the um, airport situation, the no-fly list mm -hmm. that you mentioned. Yeah. If if someone's on a no-fly list and they try mm -hmm. to get on a plane, mm -hmm. it, it, what would be the mechanism for taking somebody into custody? Like, what would ha have to happen in order to take someone into custody in that situation? So that's great. Um, so I talked to an FBI guy tonight, 
asking him the same question. Would they have been looking, watching her, or could they have just done a no-fly? He indicated that, yeah, you can do a no-fly list. And it not only do they don't let you fly, but they have a hold and detain. So if they have a hold and detain, if she goes through, then the local police officers at the airport will go to that gate. They will take her and take her to a place and then alert the authorities or it was the feds or someone that put her on a hold and detain. They would come. That might be the delay in, in a booking because they're waiting for that person to actually effectuate an in-custody arrest. And that might take time. Listen, I, I know there's going to be um, people saying, hey, it's clickbait. This is not clickbait. Uh, people are going to say and believe what they want. Uh, the reason we are coming to you live again is we've got three now, three independent sources telling us independently, independent of one another, that Donna Adelson was arrested this evening. Uh, we were told it was at an airport, presumably trying to flee. We don't know if she was trying to leave the country or perhaps go to a different state, but she was obviously flagged at this airport. We don't know if it was Miami-Dade County. We don't know if it was in Broward. Those are the, the two major airports where I am, or Miami International, Fort Lauderdale, and then a little further north is Palm Beach's airport. I would presume uh, if, it wasn't, if it was at an airport, it would have been either Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And um, so that is what we are hearing. And again, she was with her husband, Harvey Adelson, who was not detained, but uh, Donna Adelson reportedly in custody at this hour. And I'm warning everybody or cautioning everybody uh, to tell you that we could find out in an hour that we went on and told you all this. And it was, it's a possibility that it never happened. Maybe all three sources are hearing something and they're threaded together by bad information. We don't know, but there was so much confusion out there and so many people asking about it that we said to ourselves, look, we're not Fox. I'm not at Fox anymore. We're not CNN. We're not NBC, although that's my, those are my roots. So I'm hesitant to do it, but I wanted to come on and I wanted to inform you. And uh, even, even as I'm reading this uh, no hating Joel, and this is amazing. I am wondering where the COE is with my own Pepto-Bismol because it's stressing me <laughs> out just to go on and tell you about this. But um, I'll be the judge has a comment here. Uh, Tim, if true, she was arrested at the airport. Does this mean the state would indict her or is this just to keep her uh, in the U.S.? Presuming she was trying to uh, flee, Tim. That That's a great question. Um, I know the grand jury meets, the state grand jury meets on Wednesday two days from now, um, they may have put her on a no fly list or a detained list in case she tried to leave before the grand jury. I don't know if it's going before the grand jury, um, but if she was taken at an airport and taken into custody, I don't know of any other crime that she would be taken into custody. Um, Harvey was not taken into custody, which is consistent with, I think the evidence in this case, Everybody believed they had enough to arrest Donna, but not enough to arrest um, Harvey. I still don't believe they have enough to arrest Wendy. Um, so I don't know. We'll find out if uh, if they're if they have charges pending against her. Uh, maybe they charge it with an accessory after the fact. Maybe they charge it with obstruction, something that doesn't require an indictment. We don't know. But the source is saying that she got arrested and detained. Tonight, this is big news if it's true. And, you know, I don't know when we say confirmed means we actually see a mugshot or we get Jack Campbell, the state attorney, to do a press conference. But it, the delay may be that she's being held in a room at an airport. They're waiting for an agency that put that no fly or detain to come get her and actually decide what the booker and what charges the booker under the holder. Um, so that may be the delay that we're not getting any confirmation. That's why she may not have been booked yet. So, and that may take hours. Yeah. The booking process. And I can tell you, I've worked in local news in West Palm and in Miami and the booking process can take many hours. It could take 
two, three, four, six, ten hours. And especially if it's a high profile arrest, um, there's a lot that goes on. Attorneys are called. So all sorts of things could be happening behind the scenes. And I want to caution nothing could be going on behind the scenes. There's a possibility this story is not true. And I know no one wants to hear that. However, the reason we're coming to you, three independent sources, and all three of them are amazing sources. And one of them, I'll just say, is uh, beyond that, uh, probably the one of the most tapped in people that I know who is also confirming this. So there'd have to be a lot of bad information out there for this to not be true. Uh, Snoo- Susie, I'm sorry, with a really nice super sticker here. This news deserves a big tippy toe. Thank you all for your hard work. Uh, appreciate that. Debbie Biggs with a super sticker of herself uh, uh, from from her from her to us. Thank you. Um, Tim Jansen. One of the reasons that the squeeze to use a baseball analogy could be on right now and that she was trying to leave, according to these reports, is that. The grand jury was set to convene on Wednesday. Is that right? Um, yes, do we sir. know that to be true? And was I have, there a chance? Yeah, Tim, go ahead. I have I have confirmed that the grand jury is scheduled to meet on Wednesday. Um, I've confirmed that um, for sure, and um, and the media knows that for sure. They were all planning to be there and seeing if Agent Pat Sanford showed up to the grand jury proceedings, um, and and so you know. People are saying, well, Katie Magbonner got moved. They were never going to put Katie Magbonner in a grand jury, never in their lifetime. Um, all they have to do is put the agent in there. Pat Sanford could go into the grand jury. He can summarize all the evidence, and then they can proceed with trying to get a true bill. So don't worry about Katie. If they don't ever see Katie in the courtroom again, I'm sure Georgia will be happy. Um, I also, just so you know, I spoke to a federal agent um, about this. He believes that there were either eyes on the Adelson family at their residence or certainly some sort of no-fly list that was triggered uh, if, in fact, that, you know, they were trying to fly to another state or leave the country. Um, Katie, you were shaking your head um, affirmatively uh, there, as Tim just said, was supposed to be a convening of the grand jury on Wednesday. Do you think, knowing what you do about Donna Adelson, you think that she was feeling the heat and maybe said, let me get out of here a couple of days before that grand jury convenes? May I just remind us all of the words of Charlie Adelson? If they had the evidence on us, we'd already be at the airport. I think they already had a plan. I think they probably had a plan from a long time ago. And it's not lost on me that if this is true, if this is correct, as is being, you know, reported, that they would be heading to an airport under the cover of night. You know, surprise, you know, that they, if they're headed to the airport at nine, 10 o'clock at night, uh, that means they're probably taking a red eye. And if somebody was headed out to flee, they're going to be going under the cover of night, in my opinion. Uh, Some more developing news here at uh, 1013 in the evening. STS Nation's own Frankie Figs was able to locate. I got a booking booking report number, jail number. Tim Jansen, you're saying what I was just about to say. Frankie Figs, there is a booking record now for Donna to Adelson. The COE is pulling it up. Out of county warrant. Out of county warrant means it's a warrant out of probably Leon County. They have a mug image, Donna Sue Adelson, booking date 11-13-2023, 2208, white female, date of birth 25-1950, and that is a booking photo. Uh, you got a- the best You got the best guests in all of true crime right here. Tim Jansen, one of them, Katie Cool Ladies, the other. Our community, I always say best guests, better community, yeah, huge shout out to Frankie, Frankie Figs. She was breaking this for us. We, you guys work with us, and Frankie Figs is sending uh, that to the COE. We're going to have her. You're going to see a booking shot of Donna Sue Adelson arrested tonight um, on the one year anniversary, by the way, the Moscow murders. It's an interesting way to remember this. Um, November 13th, 2023 is when the luck ran out 
for Donna Sue Adelson. She is I now being. I sent it to you, Joe, a photo to Surviving the Survivor, the booking. Uh, so. And COE, Tim has sent that as well. So the three independent sources, it appears we're all right, everyone. And now I can breathe a little easier. Um, I don't need a bucket of Pepto. You can reserve that for Donna. I'll be able to sleep just fine tonight. Um, she, however, you don't want to know, uh, working on images, the COE, we're a family unit here, and our family extends out to STS Nation. You know, I never met Tim Jansen in person until I went to Tallahassee for the trial. Never met Katie Cool Lady, and I honestly feel like they are family, um, more than just friends. Um, Donna is in Miami, Dade. The case warrant FW two three one zero two three five three. Donna Sue Adelson has been arrested in Miami Dade County. Katie Cool Lady, you were uh, sobbing for a moment there. What are the emotions you're feeling tonight? It's just, um, it's been a long time. And, you know, I mean, we're all coming off of a very emotional last few weeks. And, you know, you, you're you hoping, but, you know, it just it's just an incredible relief that these people are not going to get away with this. It's just an incredible feeling of relief. And my heart is going out to Ruth and Phil right now. Yeah, these are um, these are the raw emotions uh, with cases like this. This has been going on. I, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just texting and messaging and trying to get some more information as we go here. Um, this is a monumental evening. It was yep. just a week ago. It was a week ago last week uh, that and that's redundant. A week ago last week, a week ago that Charlie Adelson was convicted of first degree murder solicitation. Uh, and literally one week later, his mother is now under arrest. Katie, remember in the uh, you were there for the news conference. Georgia Kaplman herself said, stay tuned when asked. Uh, she wasn't lying, right? Yep, that stay tuned. In fact, I just said that this morning on one of my videos. Stay tuned. And I mean, she's done a very good job at keeping, you know, things close to the vest. I, I, I want to know. And if, is it out there um, yet? Is or I, at what point would it be out there of what she's being arrested for? What she, what is she being charged if with? It says an out of state warrant. You would have to look up that warrant. Um, I could probably see if my bondsman can do it um, while we're here, um, and I can get on it. that, Tim. But Tim, real quickly, uh, since thankfully uh, you, you're not arrested, Tim, but you work with people who are. Tell us. <laughs> As far as you know, and I'm trying to get Jackie Paul Verreri, uh on the stream. Hopefully she will come on. But um, Tim Jansen, take us through the process. Uh, you usually get the calls from these clients in the middle of the night. What do you think happened tonight at Miami International Airport? Donna went there with her husband, Harvey, probably very unassuming, Tim, and then Tried to go through security, shows her passport, and what happened? Take it, take it from there. Tell us what you think yeah, happened. I think it, they probably, they may have flagged her, got her through security, and once she got through security, they probably notified the police, and then the police took her to a room. They don't want to have any incident out in the in the area, so a couple of security officers would take her to. They probably have a local police department. Local, they have a jail. They can hold them there. And then they would call. They probably did not let um, Harvey go with her because she's in custody. Harvey probably started making phone calls to family, friends, lawyers, which might have then um, alerted people to um, this arrest. Katie. Um, I know it's emotional for you. Uh, again, uh, Tim has confirmed this too. The grand jury was supposed to convene on Wednesday. Um, by the way, look at this, Tim. Tim Jansen is the best. That is our Timothy Jansen to you. Look at from J. Francis Art. Thank you, J. Francis. I got to be honest with STS Nation. Um, I was real nervous coming on tonight. Uh, you guys know I'm uh, a nervous Nelly by nature, but tonight... 
And man, could I hear Carm's voice in my head. And she was calling me right as we were going on. I guarantee you to yell at me not to go on. Um, but finally, at 54, I have uh, grown enough independence, uh, if you will, and said, you know what? I'm going to let STS Nation uh, know what is happening, whether this arrest happened or not. And now, thank you to Jennifer Williams. And now we know that the booking photo is out. Uh, we are waiting. The COE, as they say in news, is efforting to get that. And uh, during this show, you're going to see a booking photo of Donna Sue Adelson. Now, what would be the chances that another Donna Sue Adelson was arrested tonight that's not her? That's, that's my mother and me thinking. That's how she would think. It could be the one in a billion chance um, that that is the case. Uh, please listen to Catherine Regier from uh, Maui, who we love, and uh, hit that like button for us. Um, but, Katie, back to you. She knew that this grand jury was going to convene. She's just, she's not a dumb woman. She knows her son was just convicted in any way, shape or form. Does it surprise you that she apparently tried to make a run for it to where we still don't know? Doesn't surprise me at all. I'm, I mean, I'm just going to say it, you know, I'm keeping it real for me. That makes this arrest all the more sweet because this woman is trying to evade her fate. And she's the one that ignited this match. She, they killed somebody. This wasn't just a, a small matter and she's gotten away with it for nine years. But I, I think there's, she's a meticulous person. We know that about her. You know, her home was meticulous. The way hey, she Joel, was, I don't yes. mean to interrupt you, but yeah. looking at this, Bond, not applicable. She's not a, a allowed to get a bond. Okay, so, so let's look at this, Katie. Sorry, we're going to come right back to you, Katie. But let's look at this, Tim, and let's walk through this. You are now looking at the arrest document for Donna Sue Adelson. You see a jail number. You see her name, Donna Sue Adelson. Booking date, oh, that's today's date, 11-13-2023 at 2208. I believe that's, is that, what time is that? Is that's, that? that's 808. Oh, 12. 808, that's okay. 10-08. 10 10-08, 10 right? 10-08. Right? 10 so it literally looks like this was just processed into the system literally like in the last 15 minutes. So uh, you're watching, if you've been following this trial for over nine years, you're watching history unfold in real time. And if you could find out what PGKCC is, that's the location. I don't know. T okay, so I know what that is. That is Turner Guilford Knight Correction Center. That is the Miami-Dade County Jail. Turner Guilford Knight Correction Center. And let me tell you something about that place. They are the most hardened criminals, murderers, rapists. It is a nasty place. It's located in uh, west, the west part of Miami-Dade County. I've done numerous stories from there. You don't want to be, you don't want to spend time in Turner Knight Guilford Con uh, Correctional Center. I can tell you that. Uh, not firsthand, but by reporting. It is a nasty place. You can see here, it has her race, white, Caucasian, sex, female, date of birth, 2-5-1950, blonde hair, hazel eyes, 112 pounds, five foot six. Tim Jansen. Uh, the age sounds right, right? She's 73. Mm -hmm. She was just turned 73 in February. Um I don't know about the blonde hair. That might be stretching it, uh, depending on the day of the week. Um, but I don't know her eyes. But it certainly looks like it. And it is a hold for Leon County. It's an out-of-state, out-of-county warrant with no bond. So I'm trying to confirm the out-of-county warrant is for Leon and what the charges are. Um, and I got someone working on that. Tim Jansen, we're going to stay on this for a while tonight, everybody. Uh I can finally breathe a sigh of relief selfishly because I didn't want to listen to anyone yelling at me or everyone yelling at me for the next two weeks. I'll tell you, um, I, I can relate to Donna and that Pepto. You can't get Pepto in the county jail as far as I know, um, but they're going to give her some other meds. Katie Kool-Aidy, a man would never ask you your age. I know you just celebrated your birthday, and I think I know exactly how old you are because you just told me. But now imagine a woman roughly 10 years older than you um 
trying to go away with her husband. And tonight, one week after her son is convicted of murder, she's sitting in a dark, dank, cold Miami-Dade County jail. What do you think is going on through her mind tonight? Part of her had to know that she may be caught, don't you think? I, I think that she lives in an alternate reality. And so I, I don't really fathom to guess what she might be thinking. I think this could have actually shocked and surprised her that she thought that she could get away with this and had alternate, alternate, alternate plans. Like if this doesn't work, we'll do this. If this doesn't work, we'll do that. Um, I'm personally getting a great deal of satisfaction of imagining her in those kind of conditions, this privileged woman who has lived in incredible privilege, who is who got exactly what she wanted, just as George Kappelman said, do not let these people get away with this crime the way they intended to. And she's been getting away with this crime the way she intended to and parenting those little two boys that, like they were her own, reliving her young motherhood again and all her pathology and full display. And for a long time, for a decade, she's been doing that. So I'm getting a certain degree of, I would say, beyond satisfaction. I, I would might, might take it all the way up to joy of the thought of her in that, those kind of conditions. I know I'm not alone in that. Um, it's amazing the interest in this case, um, just when we look at our numbers here. And this is our initial foray into true crime. This is our OG case, and we've been all over it. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying this, but Anjanette Levy of Law and Crime is texting with us right now, Tim Jansen. Um, I think there was a question similar to this. She's as stunned as anyone to learn of this news. Yeah. Uh, but she has a question for Tim about this out-of-county warrant. And Anjanette is saying, I bet she's already been indicted. Um, Tim, just refresh on that. Is there a chance then that she's already been indicted? Is there any possibility of that? I have to admit, I do not know the law well enough to have any inkling into that. I don't know if she's been indicted, but they may have a warrant for her. I doubt she's been indicted for first degree murder because that has to go before a grand jury. They may have put a warrant out for her arrest for murder, second degree murder, obstruction, whatever conspiracy that doesn't require an indictment just in case she tried to flee before they could get to a grand jury. But when Georgia told me, stay tuned, and she had that, Georgia is a very calculated person. She would never go out and say something like that because it would make the office look bad if nothing happened. And after seeing the evidence in the case, uh, I mean, I think the community was demanding, why, why hasn't she been charged? And that's, this is big, this is a big, big day in this case. It's a big day uh, in the community, certainly in the Markel family, because now they finally believe that the people who, were, who orchestrated this and caused this to happen are going to see justice. I know they're happy with Charlie, but I think in their hearts, and I think a lot of these people on your show all believe it was Donna Adelson that pushed, organized, and caused Charlie to do what he did. Uh, by the way, Tara Ellis, how's an out-of-state? It's not an out-of-state warrant. It's an out-of-county warrant. You can see out that on the booking yeah. form right there. Out-of-county, not out-of-state. Obviously, Leon County is a different county um, than Miami-Dade County. And I'm getting a series of texts. A person who knows a lot about the law says there's two major reasons you're arrested in the airport. One is if you are armed. That is one reason. Imagine Donna with a Colt 45 on her. The other reason is you are trying to flee. Uh, those are predominantly the two main reasons one is arrested at the airport. And you have to assume that it's the latter in this case that she was trying to flee. Um, out of, it's out of county. My um, bondsman said, no picture up. Everything's completely locked down in Miami-Dade. Um, so. That is, uh, by, by the way, real quick, that is a look at TGK. That is uh, notorious in the Miami area. Um, Turner Guilford Knight Correction Center. That is what you're looking at. Doesn't it look sort of benign there? 
Uh, but I can tell you the most hardened criminals are in there awaiting um, trial. And those include murderers, rapists, and that includes female murderers. Um, the worst type of female offenders are in there. And tonight I just, it's hard for me to fathom because of course I think of my beautiful mother, Carm, um, who God forbid she would never end up there. Or I think of someone like uh, Katie cool lady. Um, Katie, can you just imagine for a moment Donna Adelson being told to take off her Cartier bracelet or whatever she's wearing and her designer jeans and told to put on orange, an orange county jumpsuit. Um, what do you think? I mean, how humiliating is that? How is that even transpiring at this point? What do you think the emotions are running through her head at this point? You think she's in shock? You think she's incredulous? I think she's in shock. I think she's incredulous. And I think she's taking a position of that this is wrongfully happening to her. I think she's ingrained in herself that she's a victim. She has instilled that kind of thinking in Charlie. We saw that. I just listened to Charlie's cross-examination today in my car um, again. And I mean, they, they, and Wendy, they embody this, like they're the victims. You know, we heard that testimony about her. Oh, uh, Danny is haunting her from the grave. You killed him. You killed this man and you're somehow a victim of him haunting you from the grave. I mean, this is how that kind of pathology thinks. She probably is very indignant right now that, that this is happening to her and how dare she be treated that way. But buckle up, Donna, because it's going to get a lot worse. And guess what, Donna? You're going to get stuck in Tallahassee. That's pretty sweet to me. That's the craziest part. Tim, how soon could Donna potentially be transferred up to Leon County? Oh, that takes a while. Um, that's the slow ride. <laughs> that's What's a while? Ride. What are we talking? We talking three days? We talking a week? We're talking a month? Um, we're, we're is there any such maybe. thing as is there any well, such thing as fighting extradition from county to county? No, no, you can't. That's not extradition. She's you got to <laughs> get somebody from Leon County to go get her. They turn her over though. Now, because of who she is, they might send somebody immediately. But I've had people waiting thirty days to get transported from a different part of the state. Um, and with this kind of charge, if it is a murder charge, it's a hold without a bond. Um, they're probably going to get her, you know, she could be here in a week, 10 days, but Jack might have the sheriff go down there or the FBI might just have some FBI guys drive her down there and bring her in custody. Or by the way, some of you are her, wondering, go ahead. Tim. What's What's the hurry bring her up here for, right? They got her charged with something other than first degree murder. Grand jury meets on Wednesday. If they get their true bill when she gets here, then they say, oh, here you go. Now you're indicted on first degree murder. Uh, some of you are probably wondering, you know, usually you see a mugshot. Well, it takes a little time to process the photo. Uh, rest assured, the COE is working on that. I don't think I can let go of the show tonight till we get that. Uh, sometimes it can take a while. So you might be here for nine hours on the stream. So get comfortable. But um, hopefully uh, we do get that um, that mug shot, the infamous mug shot. Also, uh, Ethel Bug Johnson has joined the party. I never let her in the room, but tonight is a special occasion. Even Ethel knows what's up. She is here twirling in a circle and finding comfort on her dog bed. You'll never hear that on Fox News, but you'll hear that. On STS, Lisa Bory is friend of the show saying thank you. Uh, thank you. You guys have no idea what a relief this is for me selfishly because <laughs> I don't have to chug Pepto. Uh, look at Audrey Kubala saying breathe, Joel. I'm trying to breathe now. Um, it's amazing what's unfolded. So Monday night, literally a week ago, um, Katie, just take us back there. What was your feeling then? when Charlie was convicted and realistically at that time, could you ever imagine that just a week later, the mother would be arrested for this? I mean, was that even on your radar? Was that on your bingo card? Did you have any thought it could happen? Well, I kind of did honestly, because my feeling was, I mean, here we were fancy fiction and I, and another trial watcher were sitting in this local restaurant, just trying to figure out like, 
how long should we wait close to the courthouse? And should we head back there? And then Ruth was texting me because she had to hand some books off to me. And we're like, oh, we better head over there because they might lock the doors. It was just like that, you know? And then all of a sudden, Fancy goes, verdict. And we just bolted for the courthouse. Yeah. So, I mean, and and I was doing that. They say three hours, but I think it was less than three when I did the math because they had to have their lunch. And I mean, they had to wait for their lunch. They didn't get their lunch till almost two o'clock. So, you know, they were hungry. You know, they had to sit and have their lunch and then to have their lunch and then deliberate. It was less than three hours. So my feeling was this was a very fast verdict for a very complicated case with three serious charges. And that like, this is a momentum that they can just keep surfing. And, you know, when um, Georgia said that, um, stay tuned, I happened to be positioned somewhere because I was waiting for Ruth to hand me these books. And I heard Jack Campbell say something that I really wasn't supposed to hear, so I won't repeat it, but it was really just where I was sitting and it was through a door that led me to think they're moving on this quickly. And so I'm kind of, I'm not surprised on one level, but, you know, when it's taken so long, you start to like go prepare yourself for like it not happening too, like to sort of protect yourself. But guess what? I'm ready to come back to Tallahassee and sit through another trial. Come on I back. Will. We're very I'll be back to trial. You better believe it. I will be back there. And uh, we will certainly be back there. Tim Jansen, I mean, we're putting the cart ahead of the horse, but realistically um, now she's not leaving. Um, Custody, you know, she's going to be in custody now till there is potentially a trial in this case. So the question it must be asked, how soon could there be a trial? Um, Georgia kind of half jokingly, or I don't think it was Georgia herself, but someone um, who was asking Georgia or speaking about Georgia said she could essentially try this case next week. She knows it so well. But realistically, right. how long would it take to put on another trial with Donna Sue Adelson? For those who are just joining, you're looking at a booking form right now from Miami-Dade County. Donna Sue Adelson, according to this, born in February of 1950, 112 pounds. It fits the description, five foot six, was taken into custody tonight in Miami-Dade County, presumably trying to get on a plane. We don't know if she was trying to leave the country we don't know the circumstances other than that she was arrested and she's now in custody and she was reportedly with husband Harvey Adelson, who many believe, my mother in particular, that he is also culpable in this crime. He was let go. Imagine that. Imagine that. Waving goodbye to Donna as your wife is carted away. I wonder what was going through his mind. But Tim Jansen, realistically, how soon could there be a trial? Well, first of all, it doesn't matter how soon Georgia can try it. It's going to be how soon the defense lawyer, whoever that's going to be, can get prepared and, and do it. Um, I saw someone said, well, you think Daniel Rosbaum would represent her? And it kind of reminds me of the old saying, if you keep doing the same thing, do you expect a different result? Um, I don't think she's going to probably hire. I don't know, but um, his last trial didn't end so well. Um, and that lawyer will have to come to speed. If that lawyer doesn't have, hasn't listened to the tapes and everything, I, I doubt the trial will be before 2025, maybe the end of 2024, um, because she's going to, it's November 13th. We have Thanksgiving. By the time she gets here, it might be December. If she gets indicted first degree, she'll have so in December. So that's 11 months. I, I think 2025, maybe I would guess. Wow. Uh, Katie, how is she going to feel being in jail from now till 2025? Tonight is uh, Monday, November 13, 2023. Um, she's going to sit in that jail potentially till she's 75 years old before she even goes on trial. And uh, if she's convicted, she's never getting out. This literally, literally could have been her last steps of freedom tonight. Your reaction? I don't think she's ever going to get out of incarceration ever for the rest of her life. And I think she's probably going to feel a lot better in jail, from what I understand, than she is going to be where she's ultimately headed, which is prison after that. And I don't I think Wendy's going to be visiting her brother and her mother in prison. And I wonder how it's going to be explained to those boys. Who do you think she'd visit first, a brother or her mother? <laughs> 
terrible. Well, none of them. Maybe she'll just walk away from the whole thing. You know, who knows? She actually Maybe might. she'll just yeah. bond with her dad. She yeah. might. She might just walk away. Yep. And not be she charged. Never she it. doesn't get charged. And yeah. There's so many pieces to this moving puzzle. It's kind of crazy. Look at Tasha Lawrence. Will she be able to bond out tonight? The answer to that is no. If you look there under case information where it says bond, it says not applicable. There is no bond. She is stuck. No amount of money in the world is going to get her out. And that's got to be super frustrating. Um, shout hey, out. Joe, to not only does it say no bond, it's got two stars next to it. So you can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have to laugh because I just saw a comment that said, I bet Donna is demanding to speak to the manager about now. <laughs> you imagine that. She, she, <laughs> she thinks probably it's is, an, though. She's probably being very yeah. demanding. She thinks it's an olive garden and she got a bad table. She wants to speak to the manager. Uh, David Gagamel there with a nice comment. Texas turnaround. Uh, could they offer Donna immunity to get to Wendy. We're definitely putting the cart ahead of the horse, but Tim Jansen, um, there are all sorts of things. I'm already hearing for, from some decent sources, let's put it that way, that there are there's some gamesmanship, some defense tactics already being maneuvered in this case. I'm not going to go that far tonight really? as to say, yeah, as to say what it is, yeah. but um, because that's, that's really, really uh, going out on a limb. Look at this. Look at this. She's calling me. Who is it? Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to take this call live only because it's Donna. Is that Donna? This is not Donna. Carm, you're live on Surviving the Survivor. Do you know that we're doing a live show right now? How the heck would I know that? Turn it on. Tune it on. Donna Adelson was arrested. It is confirmed. Carm, your thoughts real quick. She's shocked. She didn't think it would go this fast. And I was telling the whole, all of STS Nation that you are screaming at me. I went on prematurely, but it is now confirmed she was arrested, Carm. Carm, tune in. Love you. No idea that we were live. That's my mom for you. I would only take that call from my mother. Um, imagine me doing that on Fox News Channel. This is why people are no longer watching traditional media you got to watch STS. You got to get with the program. Get away from traditional media. Come here. Um, hey, Joel. Making the law simple. $5 super sticker. Go ahead. Look at this. 1008 is the booking. Go ahead, Tim Jan. I don't mean to interrupt you, but while I was on here, uh, the, the WCTV CBS was asking me information. What could I give them? <laughs> I'm sorry. Who was asking you that? WCTV, the local big station here, was asking me. They and had there no you knowledge. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why traditional media is dead. That's why we are alive and continuing to grow. It's coming from a guy that worked in traditional media. Right now, Carm's going, don't say that. Don't say that. But I am saying it. It's the truth. Uh, way ahead of the curve. I do have to tell you, though, um, we had three independent, amazing sources on this. And the sort of the paradigm for traditional news is two sources we had three sources and it turned out to be true look at this familiar face right here a familiar face that's carl what's the name there carl steinbeck can you hear us carl I'm going to mute Carl there he's not quite set up a coe if you can just help carl adjust but carl is here um, Katie, as much as we're sort of rejoicing in this, um, all my prayers to Dan's boys and parents. Thank you to all and to Mr. Jansen. Um, this is a tragic night again. I mean, again, now these are the boys. These are Ben and Lincoln's grandmother on one side. What are they going to be told? What are they going to, wh what is Wendy going to tell them? What happened to Grandma Donna? Um, these boys are old enough now to understand what's going on. Um, what, yeah, horrible. Katie, what do you make of that? What do you think they can possibly say or do to comfort these two boys now? Well, I think they're not going to get any dose of reality within that toxic web of that family, of that Adelson nuclear family. I just, 
my sense is that, you know, they're hitting at adolescence, which is a phase of rebellion, and they're going to have a chance to to pull away of from that web. And they are eventually going to grow up. They're going to meet friends and love interests and partners and that sort of thing that may be an opportunity for them to find some sense of truth and reality. And I, I said this on one of my um, videos and that, you know, having come from lost, having lost my mother at the age of five um, and, you know, around the age that they were when they lost their dad, I've just grown into learning all the ways that my love, my mother lives inside of me and expresses herself inside of me, even though I don't have many memories of my mother. And it, led me to be thinking about these boys that even though they had their dad, he was very devoted to them, very connected to them in very influential phase of their lives. And I believe that he still lives in them and that as they develop and they grow, that they will find a way to be connected to him themselves because that's natural. That's human nature to want to be connected to your biological parent. And that's what I hope for those boys. Hey, Joel, are you there? We can't hear you. I'm sorry. I muted myself because I was trying to make a call. I'm just, I was saying, I'm really hoping that Ruth and Phil Markell, who we're thinking of tonight, and Shelly Markell, Dan's sister, are reunited with these, um, with these two young boys and, and, you know, and that they are able to repair the bond that wasn't really be, be wasn't able to be formed in a proper way. I hope that now that can, you know, come full circle. Carl Steinbeck is going to join. He's having some technical issues. The COE is working with Carl to get him on to get uh, his take. Um, but again, uh, I'm thinking of Ruth and Phil and Shelly. I'm assuming that they now know um, what has transpired. Again, for those just tuning in, Donna Sue Adelson arrested tonight at Miami International Airport. She's being held. Uh, without bail, without bond, uh, at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center, which is a nasty, gnarly place. Um, Tim Jansen, again, putting the cart way ahead of the horse here. How soon do you think before Charlie Adelson gets wind of this? Um, when will he know about this? And do you think there's any chance that now that another Adelson is in custody – that he tries to jockey for some sort of position, make some sort of deal. Is that possible? Well, he would, they would get a tablet. They have the TVs at the jail. He might learn tomorrow during news because it'll be news. Sometimes those people get newspapers. Uh, he'll probably know for sure tomorrow uh, unless his lawyer calls him tonight or he puts a call into his lawyer tonight. Um, I would guess. Yes. Mm. Hey, Carl, are you there? Hey, Carl, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, but I'm hearing myself. Um, the COE is going to work with you just to fix that. Exactly. Thank God. For Thank the... God. Can you hear me now? Carl, I can hear Carl, you. I can hear you. All right. COE, why, why are we? Why are we? Well, I'm going to shut up, I'm gonna Carl. Shut up, Carl. You're, you're, you're talking about, what, you're happened talking about what happened tonight. Yeah, I thought this was uh, really great news. I wasn't so... Uh, Super excited about it. I'm more or less relieved that this has happened now. I think it's a natural progression based on the awesome job that the state attorney's office did on prosecuting Charlie's case. If you could really just feel them um, and see the momentum that they had in that day that I was there when they had the final arguments and the way the jury was responding to their arguments, it was such a slam dunk steamroll win for them. So this really makes so much sense for them to just carry over and go to the actual person that orchestrated and had the most hate for Dan Markell and wanted him eliminated in such a cruel, vicious fashion. So it's uh, it's it's really sad. On the other hand, to think that you know this, th there's people out there that would do this kind of thing, and and what these uh, boys have been through is just really despicable. And now they are going to have to wonder. Wait a minute, Charlie's gone. We're you know, what are they going to say? He was framed and falsely accused and convicted. And now grandma's gone and uh, being arrested as well. So there's going to be a lot of twists and turns and a lot of dominoes, I think, are going to start to fall in a good way for uh, justice here. 
Oh, uh, just to show you the scope and magnitude of this case, look at the super sticker from Michael Osel. Hi from India. India. People in India are watching this case. You'd think Dan would have preferred the timing to be done until the children were a little older. Um, unfortunately, Dan isn't here to make that decision, and that's because of the Adelsons. One now a convicted murderer. Um, Carl Steinbeck, I have to keep you muted when I'm talking to you because of your feedback, but I want to come right back to you, and then we'll go to the others. Uh, when you talk about a lot of moving parts in a good way, um, I was already asking Tim, do you think that Charlie is going to potentially jockey for some sort of deal? Uh, what is going to happen in the next coming days? Well, I think that uh, it's, it's going to be something along the lines of Charlie to save his mom may offer up Wendy. I think that's probably the most likely thing, but Charlie's not also gone to prison either yet. So I think it's going to take some time to develop. And, and keep in mind, Donna and Harvey has been talking every day the last year and a half that he's been in confinement there at, in uh, Leon County Jail. So now this is going to be the tomorrow's going to be the first day they haven't talked in a year and a half. So this is really going to create so much tension. And uh, and John is just going to become unglued there. Um, and keep in mind, she's just there, arrested there in Miami Dade. So she's going to have to be transported up to Tallahassee. And just think about all the thoughts that are going to be flooding her mind when this happens. So she's going to be in the same jail as her son, who, who uh, was the operational planner for this murder. And so it's just going to be really, really, um, I guess it's really surreal to think all this is happening so fast. And uh, But it, it's a great thing. And I think that Donna is uh, not going to be able to handle Leon County Jail as good as Harvey has. And so I think there's going to have to be a Harley, lot of meetings Harley. between the attorneys um, to see what uh, what the way ahead is going to be and who's going to be able to flip on whom. But it's going to take a while. I don't think the flip's going to happen right away if there is a flip. Tim Jansen, I got to go to you on that. So Carl just laid out an interesting possibility, which is Harley turns on Wendy to save his mother. And I got to say, of all the possibilities, to me, that seems kind of likely, especially in light of the fact that when they were in court together, they made no real eye contact. And Charlie basically, right. at one point on the wiretaps, talks about how lucky Wendy is, and she doesn't even realize it. Those comments were made after the murder. I don't think there's any love lost between these two dysfunctional siblings. Do you see that as a possibility that Charlie turns on Wendy this family is literally cannibalizing before our eyes, eating each other to save the young. Tim Jansen. Well, right now, Charlie has not flipped. From the sources I've talked, he has not flipped at this moment. Now, he didn't know his mother was arrested probably yet. And the question will be, does Daniel go to the state and say, hey, before sentencing, uh, can we do anything? Is there anything we can do? And then George is thinking, well, what can you do? And then maybe they'll do a proffer. Uh, or the, what, what could be done is a lawyer can do a proffer and tell him what Charlie might be able to give him. And then they'll have to make a decision if it's worth it to cut a deal. They're not going to drop charges against Wendy, but they might negotiate a deal, plead to a lesser like second degree or conspiracy or something else where she won't get a mandatory life. That's possible. Um, but I, I don't, I want to see who's representing Donna. That'll tell you, you know, who's going to be the lawyer representing Donna. Are they going to get another lawyer from Miami that's related? Is Daniel Rosbaum going to represent them? Tim, uh, I think I, I just heard your phone ring, Tim. Is your phone ringing, Tim? That was a joke. <laughs> They're calling you. They're yeah, calling my you. daughter calling me. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was thinking that that was Donna calling you from the jail. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Uh, look at this, Tim. C. Taylor, I think you've already said this. WCTV and the Tallahassee Democrat now reporting this news. Uh, we've been on the air for an hour and four minutes. That's why you listen to non-traditional media now. Forget traditional media. I'm going to stop harping on that. The Tall Tallahassee Democrat has confirmed that she was arrested at the Miami airport. Uh, Carl Steinbeck. Does it surprise you? It's literally one week since Charlie's conviction. Does, and, and there was this grand jury that Tim Jansen has confirmed was going to convene this Wednesday. The proverbial squeeze was on. Does it surprise you in any way that Donna made a run for it, it seems like? 
No, it doesn't at all. And I think it's another brilliant move by law enforcement to go in after her now. Because one of the things that that is a possibility it could, it could be remote, hopefully it would have been, but I think if there was uh, any chance of harming the boys, that if Donna knows she's going down, she's going to flee the country. I think the other option could have been, you know, maybe there's going to be a murder suicide kind of thing. You see a lot of that nowadays. We never used to see that decades ago, but there seems to be so much of that nowadays. When when family life's imploding, somebody's leaving, their life is over as they know it. A lot of people just freak out and do this such an evil, wicked act and uh, just end it all for everybody. So that that was something that uh, was was a remote possibility, but still a possibility. So I think with Donna being out of the equation, though, is having access to the boys. I think that threat is probably diminished some. Katie, you'd probably know more about the psychology of that than I could speak to it. But I think that the boys are a little bit safer now. But yeah, they're going to have, um, you know, they're going to be around their mother now. What's their mother? When are you going to say to the boys? So it's going to be the boys are really going to start to question all the uh, reality, so-called reality that they've been fed by the uh, the uh, planners of this murder of their dad. Katie, just pick up on that. Um, what, you know, the boys are old enough to Google um, and get information. They're probably going to go on their own and try to find out why grandma's in jail. I mean, again, we, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but um, what about these two young boys and uh, how they might react to this news? Well, I, I have to uh, put a word out about Ruth and Phil Markell, who have shown incredible restraint through this nearly a decade of this. And they've done that because of the boys, I believe, from what I know and what I've observed, to they have feathered a safe nest for those boys through not bad mouthing people that deserve it who killed people who killed their son and they have shown remarkable restraint and have created a safe space for those boys to come to and Shelly as well. Um, and I, I think that's what has motivated it, which has been just sh shocking to me and so impressive to me that they've been able to do that over the years and, and consistently for so long so I think, and, and also the person we're also not acknowledging is Robert Adelson because his mother just got arrested tonight. And no matter the estrangement, no matter any of that, that has got to be hitting him deep as well. But that's also a safe space for those boys. And these people are their blood. So, you know, who, who know the truth and are reality-based people. So there is hope for them that they're not dangling out in the universe, um, but there's going to have to be some separation from the toxicity. And hopefully Wendy goes to prison as well. You know, it just creates boundaries for them to, to heal. And Katie, hey, this is, uh, yeah, go ahead, Tim. I, I was just looking at this chat and someone said that they said Wendy and Harvey were just coming back from Italy and maybe not leaving. I don't know if that's true, but maybe if someone knows, if they were in Italy and just coming back, they probably were on the no fly list or the, or, the, or the detain list. So they let them fly back into the international and then arrest them at the airport. Uh, that's I don't know if that's true. That might be something that needs to be followed up. That, all we know is she was arrested at the airport. We don't know if she was leaving or coming. We're assuming she was leaving. Tim's not just a uh, not just a lawyer. He's also a journalist. A great point. It could be that they were coming back into the country, and they just wanted to nab her. We're gonna that information will come out in the coming hours. Um, Katie, back to you from Spicy Irwin. I like that name. The person we really haven't talked much about tonight. How will Princess Wendy care for her children now? She's now lost her brother, and her mother, for all intents and purposes, is gone. Uh, now in custody maybe never to see freedom. Just think about this for a moment. You know, you always hear when, God forbid, someone passes, they were here one minute, the next minute they were gone. Well, there was a moment in time tonight where Donna Adelson was taking a step as a free person, and the next step she took was a person in custody, handcuffed, likely never to be free again. Katie, can you wrap your mind around that? That's an insane thought. It It is, and it it is really intense to think about. And Donna was 
in my opinion, not just co-parenting those boys, she was like the primary parent. I mean, they moved them to a school that was literally across the street from where Donna was living. Right. I think Donna was probably spending more time with those boys than Wendy was. And I think that was part of what motivated her, that she wanted to parent those boys like she was their mom. I'll never forget what she said to Charlie in one of those wiretaps of about an apartment they were think looking at or whatever. And she goes, well, you have to remember, I have two little boys as if they were hers. So I, I think Wendy went right along with that because Wendy's the baby and she's like a baby ha with babies. And so this is a huge loss for Wendy because she was incapable of parenting her own two boys by herself. But Wendy's very resourceful and Wendy is very manipulative. And so she will find somebody else to slide into that role, to take that role, Donna's role over for her fairly quickly, in my opinion. I don't think she'll um, step up to parent her kids better. I think she'll just find somebody else to do it for her. Carl Steinbeck from Amber Am. I'm going to let you loose on this, Carl. What do they have on Donna but her one call with Charlie? And by the way, uh, we're going to get to that in a minute. Roxanne says, how soon will Donna appear in court in Miami-Dade County? Because I've reported here. Uh, they will have her via... Uh, like a teleconference with the judge tomorrow for her first hearing. Uh, right. Tim Jansen, before we get to uh, Carl on this question, just real quick, walk us through that first hearing. How does it go down? She'll have first appearance and they're going to read the charges. They'll tell her you have an out of county warrant from Leon County, no bond. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and that'll be the end of it. And then, mm. uh, and then Leon County will be notified. I'm sure they already notified, had been notified that you have an inmate here you need to come get. Uh, and they might take your time getting her. She'll take the same drive Luis Rivera took and Sigfredo took, but she'll be in back of a police car with cuffs on, taking the slow drive, the seven, eight hour drive. Well, with the deputies, it might be a 10, 11 hour drive. Hmm. Uh, by the way, we're welcomed now by Captain Tommy Scoville. Tommy served some hard time. He was at one point a professional skier. Uh, he became a public speaker, came from a well-to-do family, got addicted to drugs, turned to bank robbery. Uh, he's turned his life around. He has a uh, show on YouTube, the, the Lifeboat, where he helps people with sobriety. Tommy Scoville, man, I specifically, when I heard this news, asked to get Tommy on the horn. And here he is. Tommy, uh, we are confirming reports that Donna Adelson was arrested this evening at Miami International Airport. Talk to us, number one, your reaction to this, but number two, that first time you were arrested, how scary is it? You know, I, I think about this all the time. I really do. I I was living a life of crime. You know what I mean? I was I was out there and I was in it, and it's still was just one of those things that is so um, overwhelming. You know, for me, there was a part of it that was, a, you know, relief. I don't know that she's going to feel that. She might. Um, this might be one of those things that, I mean, this is, has to be, it, you know, killing her. But uh, that moment of terror, when the when she hears that door slam this first time tonight, I think that that's going to be a reality that uh, is definitely something is uh, is going to be difficult for her to wrap her brain around. I mean, this is this is just ugly stuff. It really is. Tommy, I was justice. saying to the <laughs> yeah, you said it right. It's justice. But Tommy, I was saying to the rest of the panel, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. By the way, Tommy's one of the writer guys you will meet. I'm trying to convince him to write a book. Guy's got stories for days. But um, Tommy, at one point tonight, she was taking a step as a free woman. And then next step, she was in handcuffs. And she will likely never be free again uh, if this trial plays out the same way as Charlie. How do you how do you begin to wrap? I mean, can you wrap your head around that, especially as a 73 year old woman? And I can tell you, I reported in Miami, so I know the jail she's in. They are hardened criminals in there and hardened female criminal criminals. I'm gang, gang members, murderers. It's as bad as it gets uh, at the Turner Guilford Night Correction Center in Miami. How is she wrapping her head around this tonight? You know, this is such an unusual case in that. Um, she had to know this was coming, right? They've been sitting and talking about it and everything else. This is the whole world's on watch waiting for her to get arrested. Uh, but uh, I think that the, the body has a way of protecting itself. You know what I mean? I've watched so many inmates where you look at their paperwork and go, 
dude, you really think you've got a chance of beating this? And they will talk themselves into that. And I think it's almost uh, it's it's a process of easing yourself into the reality. I don't think that that reality is going to sink in with her tonight. I think she'll be thinking about miracles. I think she'll be thinking about how fast it's going to take to get a bond. Uh, but it's going to sink in. I mean, it is definitely going to sink in. Uh, but that that first night, she isn't going to be sleeping in there tonight. It's going to be a tough one. And it, I mean, it couldn't happen to a nicer person. I I, I don't root for anybody to go to jail, but um, this family deserves justice, you know. And uh, they they really sort of did this with impunity. And I I don't know, man. I'm loving this. I'm sorry. Maybe that makes me a bad person, but I'm loving this. Uh, you're probably not the only one, Tommy Scoville. You're one of the better people I know. Love having you on the show. Consider you a friend, uh, even though we have never met in person, but we will one day soon. Carl Steinbeck, uh, there was a comment that I wanted to come to you, uh, kind of a snide remark saying the only thing they have on Donna is one phone call. Your response. Well, all you have to do is look at the trial for Charlie and the prosecution pretty much put Donna on trial just as much as Charlie. There's a lot more than just that one phone call. Well, that one phone call is really rock solid to show her involvement where she said it's about both of us you and me referring to the uh note with the five thousand dollar demand so the demand had to do with the problem up north which was taking care of dan markell and getting him murdered so it was so obvious what they're talking about and then if you think about that she had the uh she's the one that scheduled the geek squad to come by and repair this bogus tv and you just look at the orchestrated planning of all these people. You look at how Jeff LaCasse was framed since November. You look at Katie McVanwa. She was set up to find a hitman all the way back in October of 31, uh, October 31st of the year prior. So all these little intricate detailed facts all weave together to show a, a concentrated effort among so many family members. And she was the ringleader. She was a, the director of how this was going to happen. She's the one that also said this was going to be the birthday surprise that was covertly talked about. And the caterer were, were the hitmen on this code. So if you look at all the code language and all that, it really shows this was a, a family hit job. And she was the one that really wanted it done the most, I would say. She also was paying Katie from the firm. Right. Yeah, she, she paid all the payments. She paid all the payments. You're right, Tim Jansen. Uh, Spitting chips. Katie Cool Lady to you on this one. Thrilled to bits. So I guess Tommy's not the only one from Australia. Hooray. Aussie, 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 as they say. Uh, Katie Cool Lady, why? Um, I've asked you this before. I'm going to ask you again. Why has this riveted the whole world? I mean, we've got Australia here. We just had someone from India in the chat. Glad to see this news. And by the way, I'm, I'm with Tommy on this. You know, people are obviously happy about the news but at the end of the day this is just such a horrific and tragic story and the, these children now not only did dan markell lose his life but you've got uh the markell boys whose names were changed to adelson and you've even got as much as people don't like them charlie adelson has a son that's going to grow up without a dad and now these kids without grandparents so there's plenty of tragedy to go around i get i get the joy in the in the nabbing of the matriarch of this family but um i just beseech everyone to keep in mind these young children who are uh caught in the crossfire if you will but katie why is this captured everyone's attention around the world literally i think there's a lot of things at play um one is that dan was truly as innocent as a victim as you can get. I mean, he was just an ordinary person going through his ordinary day, doing ordinary things, shot in his own car, in his own garage. For, I say, he was shot for a zip code. You know, I mean, it's just so incredibly vicious with a victim that they they couldn't even tarnish, you know, in court. And they love to tarnish victims now. And they couldn't even do that with him, especially his parenting. I mean, even Wendy couldn't tarnish his parenting. And that's what he was killed over, was being too good of a pa parent, too good of a father. I mean, it's it's just so hideous, that part of it. So the victim is one thing. But there's class issues here that I think resonate with people, resonated with me. I say the rich white people set up the poor brown people to take the fall for it, and they got away with it for a really, really long time. And so, you know, that was part of what pulled me into it, was just the the audacity and this, the, 
that compounded the tragedy of the loss was how these people just went along their lives celebrating that they got away with it. They got exactly what they wanted and the, just the level of injustice of that. And just one other thing I want to say, spinning off what the guys were saying a minute, let's not forget that Donna is the domestic coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> right? Said that on Wheel of Fortune. She's a domestic coordinator. She coordinated this whole thing. That's a great uh, imitation. Mick Spunky here. I knew my investment in SDS would pay off. Gambled big tonight. Uh, Tommy, I don't know if you know this. We didn't have complete confirmation of this. We had three independent sources at the beginning of the show. Now it has been confirmed. Rolling the dice, Tommy. Um, real quick, That's Carl. That's the spirit. Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> Um, Carl, Adam Lamparello is an attorney, um, a super sticker here. Charlie deserves 15 years. Donna deserves life because she was the mastermind. Your take. Well, but Donna couldn't have executed the murder without Charlie having the criminal element connections. So they're all equally guilty, I think, but it all depends on who's got leverage to flip on somebody else. So Charlie has that leverage. Uh -huh. to uh to flip on his mom which i don't see happening but like i said he i think he would possibly be willing to flip on wendy down the road when it gets really threatening for him in prison right now he's in jail he's safer there he's not having all those uh threats and extortions and bodily harm done to him like he will once he gets sentenced and, and um, gets transferred to a prison there so that's when i think the sparks are really going to fly and we're really going to start seeing some uh, dominoes happening um I got to admit, part of it was uh, intuition, part of it was luck, and part of it was just relying on great sources. But thank you to Jan Kunert or Jan, I'm not sure. Love STS Nation watching from the UK. I guess it would be Jan in the UK. Tommy Scoville, please take some detail with this. You get arrested in an airport. Um, what is it like? You're then put in the back of a, a police car. Uh, what are the steps involved in being yep. booked into the county jail, Tommy? Uh, once they get in there, the, most county jails have a, a a little area that's carpeted. It's where you hang out if there's any chance of you posting bail. Uh, she's going to get in there and uh, and immediately get access to uh, three or four telephones she can make collect calls from. Uh, and then they're going to get her through a process of taking her blood pressure, doing all of those things. Um, and then she's going to get sat down in a chair where most people call bail bondsmen and do the, you know, those type of things to try to get out. Tommy, by the way, the there's, there's this evening. <laughs> yeah, Tommy, there's no, no bail. It's already, there's, there's no bail here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Then what she's going to be doing is waiting for about eight hours for them to get all of the, uh, you sit in that room for a really long time watching uh, everything go on around you. It is a very, very slow process. It takes anywhere from six to 10 hours usually to get back into a cell. Really, really long process um, and a freak show. If you've never been in there before, it's terrifying. You know, she's watching a lot of drunk people who are fighting. She's watching heroin addicts who are vomiting in the corner, right? There's just, this is not a pleasant experience for a woman that has never been to this kind of a situation. It's going to be terrifying. And I think personally, I think the reason that this is so big all over the world, I mean, look, you got a guy in a Ferrari who kind of looks like he came from central casting. And all of these, uh, all of the characters involved in this are just fascinating. I don't think you could write a script better than this. Yeah, I'm with you, Tommy. Um, just go. To, I don't know if it's my sick, um, sadistic side of me, but I want to hear more since you've been in there. Now, how many? She's sitting in like I guess a holding <laughs> cell. Um, how many? How many women are going to be in there with her? Uh, up up to how many? And um, what are they going to do when they see a 73 year old woman sitting next to them? Yeah, more than likely, she's not going to hit a holding cell per se. The people that end up in holding cells have done something wrong. They're either really, really drunk or they've got a beef with somebody. So they put them off in these small cells. She's going to be in a large day room with, that almost looks like an auditorium with flat seating. And she's just going to be watching television and doing whatever until they call her name. But the panic right now is setting in. And there are going to be people that sidle up to her from Jump Street. I mean, they're going to be interested. And this is a woman that I would imagine half of that part of the country is going to instantly recognize and she's going to get cat called and heckled. And if you come in and they know who you are, it is a very different experience. Uh, when I went in for the, uh, for the bank robberies, um, it had made that by the time they had gotten me to the floor, the news of me being arrested had been all over the place. And it's a different experience when everybody in there is staring at you. 
And I would imagine that Ms. Adelson is going to be looking at a lot of eyes staring at her through this process. This is, this is a, honestly, as bad as this woman is, and I think she's about as reprehensible as anyone on earth, there's a part of me that just pities someone of that age going into this because it's going to be ugly. It really is. Uh, when they take um, her to the back, more than likely they're going to put her into protective custody, but if not, she'll have one cellmate. Um, I want to get back to you in one second, Tommy. This is why I love STS Nation. Best guest, better community. Andre says, Dade County Jail is worse than Broward. I've been to both. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I got to love it. Um, <laughs> Tim Jansen, will Donna and Charlie not be able to speak anymore because they are co-conspirators? Is that a little rendezvous over, Tim? That's correct. They won't be able to speak anymore. And just think, you just came back from a lovely vacation in Italy. You're going through customs. Oh, come with me, ma'am. You got a warrant for your arrest. And Harvey's standing there with all these bags, passports, and his wife. What the hell is he going to do now? Um, crazy. It's just sad for those kids. Um, I know when we talked earlier, oh, Joel, yeah. Ruth, Ruth did not know. I hope somebody from the state attorney's office the victim witness coordinator is letting her know and she's not finding out by media. Uh, that shouldn't happen. Uh, I agree with you on that. And to be honest, I don't know what she knows at this point, to be honest. Um, Shalisa, Tim, right back at you with this question. Will Donna plea, given how fast the jury convicted Charlie, she knows how strong the state's case is, also, th uh, also, thanks for the cautious yet quick reporting. You're welcome. Tim? I don't think – I think Charlie's case was stronger than Donna's, right? Because you got the money and you got the girlfriend talking about the money. You got direct contact. Here we have – it's clearly a circumstantial evidence case. None, none of the other witnesses, Mag Bonawa or Lewis, can any of them point out Donna. So it's going to be – the recordings, the bump, the paying on the payroll, the conversations with Charlie. So it's not as strong. It is a strong circumstantial evidence case, but I think the state's case was a little stronger against Charlie. And depending who her lawyer is, she might try to go to trial if they don't offer her a deal that she can live with. Now remember, she's 73 years old. What kind of deal do you offer someone at 73? I'm going to give you 20 instead of life. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. you don't have a lot of room to wiggle with as a defense lawyer. Like yeah. an all or nothing. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the name is because it's getting late and I'm fried. We, by the way, we did a whole show on uh, the Moscow murders and let us not forget them. Tonight is the one year mark since those four college students were murdered in Moscow, Idaho. Um to you, Katie, cool lady, Charlie's going to take the blame and fall on his sword to save his mom and sister. The mom part, maybe. Katie, what do you think's going on? Charlie might not even know yet. A lot of people think that a prison guard has already informed him. By the way, Tommy, real quick, would Charlie already know this news sitting in Leon County Jail? Would he have already found this out? No, not unless he saw it on a television or something like that. There's nobody getting info in there like that. But, the, you know, they're not usually bending over backwards to help people out. I doubt it. I love having I can, see a, I can see a guard walking by and say, hey, Charlie, you see your mom just got arrested at the airport? I can see that happening. If Charlie was a jerk to the guard. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> you know, yeah, if, they, if Charlie pissed off a guard, they could definitely have fun with him. Most guards are afraid if they say something like that the first time they're looking in the wrong direction. They guards tend to be pretty uh, respectful cats. Um, yeah. In my experience, 13 years of doing it, they, they tend to not want to get hit. So they do well, what they can know. to kind of keep the peace. Yeah. Hmm. Um, for all intents and purposes, those boys have lost two parents now and may lose a third. They'll need therapy for a long time. That is for sure. Yeah. Uh, Katie, what about this notion? And, and Tim and Carl brought it up early on. Do you think, do you think that Charlie maybe turns on Wendy to save mom and himself? If anybody turns on anybody, I think Carl nailed that. That's possible scenario because let's not forget June and Chinda testified that there was a period of time when Charlie and Wendy were completely estranged after the murder. 
So they've already had periods of obviously major conflict. And I think, you know, Carl also said on an earlier show that that the parents are elderly. So whether Donna's arrested or not, they're going to die, you know, fairly soon and that there's no statute of limitations on murder and that his I don't know if he said it on the show or said it to me, but, you know, it really hit me that that would be when Charlie would turn on Wendy. But I think if anybody turn, well, I think Wendy would turn on absolutely any of them. I think she'd throw all of them under the bus. Huh. I think she's been pre throwing Charlie under the bus since even before it happened, when she started talking to Jeff LaCasse about, uh, you know, Charlie hi hiring a hitman, that confidential conversation. I think that was the pre throw under the bus. But, yeah, I think uh, Charlie's not going to turn on his mother. But um, he's young and facing the rest of his life in prison. And the only way out is to save his mother by turning on Wendy. I think that's the only deal we, we would see. And Katie, uh, right back at you with Roxanne's comment. Donna is going to confess. She's going to tell all. Do you think she's uh, chugging the Pepto and thinking about singing like a, uh, like a bird? Not in a million years. Nope. No? I don't think so. Nope. Hmm, interesting. Uh, greetings from Barbados. Uh, Tommy, you got to take me back into that jail one more time. So, you know, you've got these old images. I guess I'm a sadistic, you know, what? Uh, but you got these old images of the sure. inmates being, you know, given their thumb and doing the fingerprint. Uh, has that changed? What are they? I mean, what if Donna needs to go use the yes. restroom right now? What if she's a, what if she's in that holding cell, Tommy, or whatever the cell is that she's in and she needs to use the restroom? What happens right now? they're going to let her go up and uh, go to a restroom that has like the saloon style doors that you used to see in the old movies. So that basically you can see 90% of this person without seeing all of them. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think a, a woman of that age is going to be really excited about using those facilities. Um, they're going to, most cells are about uh, uh, 14 feet deep and about eight feet wide. I mean, that's, that's usually pretty, pretty standard operating procedure with a couple of bunks, uh, a toilet and a sink. And if you're uh, the, the, first, the biggest culture shock to me was the fact that there was a person in there I was going to have to go to the bathroom in front of. It may sound crazy for a criminal, but I'd never been in jail. And that to me was, I think I probably went nine days without using the restroom. You know, it was one of those things that was just such a shock to me that, uh, you know, over time you you make adjustments. But I think this is, uh, you know, I have a, I have a mom that's uh, that's closer to her age and I, it's terrifying as a concept to try to think of my mom in there. I just can't even wrap my brain around, but I can't. Yeah. yeah it's and by ugly, the way, Tom, ugly place for a woman of that age. It's not a place for anybody. Tommy has turned his life around. Uh, if things go the way they did for Charlie, Don is never going to have that chance. And not to mention she's uh, substantially older. Tommy Scoville is just an awesome dude. Very glad that I've crossed paths with him. Uh, Mary Gough, Carl Steinbeck. Uh, Donna is 72 years old. She's going to crack. Carl, do you agree or disagree with Katie cool lady? Is she going to, sing like a canary in there well i think they have to be aware of the fact that she's had counsel remember when she was resisting that uh deposition down there um my miramar that she had counsel there so they're probably aware of that and they probably are, were informed you, you cannot question her so she probably has never been um questioned mm -hmm. at all on this and so i expect that to remain the same and they probably already through her attorney has said, do not talk to the police. Uh, we'll come see you if you get arrested. So that if I'm sure already had that conversation. And so she's, she's uh, aware that she needs to follow her lawyer's advice and not mess it up by talking because once you start talking and, and, and all that, and you don't have your lawyer there to negotiate a deal ahead of time, you lose all your leverage. By the way, this is uh, Carm here. She goes, I don't know why she uses her sister's name. I have no idea. We have to fix that. Um, by the way, Carm and I are taking photos for the book cover tomorrow. Very exciting. Carm is going to be here at uh, promptly 1130 a.m. She's asking, where was Donna heading? This is your mother asking with an exclamation mark. Uh, we discussed this, Carm. You're late to the party. <laughs> However, since you are my mom. I will inform you that we don't know. And uh, Tim Jansen is getting some news that maybe she, they were returning from Italy and were coming back from a trip when they got arrested. But the bottom line is at this juncture, no one knows if they were trying to leave and flee or if they were coming in. But we will find that out uh, as time passes over the next couple of hours. Tim Jansen, this is an interesting comment that probably only you and Carl could answer. 
I'd love mm -hmm. to know what Dan Rashbaum, Charlie's defense attorney, what his reaction was to this news. What do you think it was, Tim? I don't think he's surprised knowing he knows the case as well as Carl and I do. Uh, he knew that uh, Donna had peril. He knew Donna was on those tapes. He knew what was said. That's why he came up with this elaborate double extortion because he knew he, he had to answer all the questions about the money and the conversations between Donna and Charlie. So he knew, I'm sure he knew it was a matter of time. Uh, I'm sure he was hoping if he got Charlie off that, that Donna would not have been charged. And that probably would have been true. If there would have been a hung jury or there would have been a not guilty, I don't think Donna would have been arrested. Stacy Shin, Katie Cool Lady, how mad do you think they all are at Wendy, knowing this family dynamic, Katie? Hey, hey Joel, that's saying the photo is out. So I don't know. People on the comments saying her mugshot is out. COE, get on it. She's on it. She'll get it. She'll get it. Um, that's going to be jarring. We're going to definitely stay on air until we get that. But um, Katie, uh, how mad do you think they all are at Wendy at this point? And by the way, Debbie says, Tim, don't take Donna's case, Tim. That's what it says here. Um, oh. <laughs> hey, you got to pay the bills. Um, Katie, cool lady. Are they all? I don't, think, I don't think they're mad at Wendy at all. I think they're mad at Dan. I think they're blaming all of this on Dan. I think they have justified this homicide in their heads for all these years that he deserved it. And if it wasn't for Dan requiring them to murder him, then they wouldn't be in this prediction. Pr pr what am I trying to say? It, what's the word? Predicament. Predicament. <laughs> Predicament. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think they're, I think they're blaming Dan and I think they have been this whole time. Hmm. Tommy Scoville, this raises an interesting point. You know, perhaps the greatest example of this is O.J. Simpson, who I, I think truly believes he didn't commit the crime in his own demented mind. Um, <laughs> but Tommy, in, in prison, in prison, do, do you find that people convince themselves that they're innocent? There it is, everyone. A, a historic oh, moment. Oh, wow. There, let's take a moment here. and This is the booking photo for... Donna Sue Adelson arrested this evening. Tommy, walk us through this photo and what we're seeing here. Obviously, seeing a head on and a profile, and then the color head on shot. She appears to be wearing, yeah, like a gray pullover. Tell us what we're seeing here. Whatever, yeah, whatever she walked in with. In the old days, you would hold up a you know a little number plaque. Believe it or not, I was getting arrested that long ago. But you would hold up a number plaque that had your case number and all of that, and you would turn sideways and do all that. Uh, she steps up to that wall and there's a there's a uh, camera that's going to do all that work at once. So she just sat there and this thing went around her and, and did all that. That's the, the newer ones. You don't get your fingerprints done on uh, in ink anymore. Now it's done just on plates of glass. It's a much faster process. Uh, but all of those processes really hammer home where you are. <laughs> You know what I mean? When you're when you're surrendering your fingerprints and they're uh, stripping you out. You know, this is a 73 year old woman who's going to have to take off her clothing and uh, go through that entire process. And it's I wouldn't wish this on any uh, on on any woman in the world, uh, even if they deserve it. This is going to be a very tough night for this woman. And, uh, you know, the mugshot looks like it's taken a toll already. That's not the she definitely looks different. It's painful to look at in spite of the fact that I'm not real fond of her. And. and Tommy, just to be clear, that by the way, shout out to Frankie Figs for helping us with this breaking news tonight. Huge help from the STS community. That's why I always say best guest, better community. But Tommy Scoville, just to be clear, are these the clothes that she was arrested in? Is that what you just said? Because it looks like she's wearing like a track jacket. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's And, and you, you always see the, uh, the booking photos are usually done before the process of anything else happens. So you're normally wearing your street clothes in the, in the booking photo. I always have. Every time I've been booked, I've had the pictures taken and what I came in with. Then they'll go through the process of, uh, you know, getting uh, the, her vital signs and, you know, making sure if there's medication, she's going to, you know, take it. She has to see a nurse and a counselor. And uh, then they're going to take her into a room where they strip her out and uh, put her in, you know, clothing that 4,000 women have worn in the last couple of months. So this is going to be a real reality roundup for this woman tonight. It's going to be tough. Uh, COE coming in to make sure I give a huge shout out to Frankie Figs who helped us get um, this photo uh, 
very quickly um, off of the Miami-Dade County site. So thank you. Um, Tommy, I was talking to the COE there. So when will she be changed into the um, into her prison jumpsuit? And, what, and obviously when she appears in court, I guess via video, she will be in that jumpsuit the next time we see her, correct? Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so the, a lot of times the county jails will do top and bottoms. The uh, the jumpsuit thing uh, tends to happen more, at least in my experience in prison. The county jails that I went to usually had a pants and a blouse kind of a combo. They're made of the thickest material on planet Earth. I mean, it's literally designed so it can be washed 5,000 times. They are the most uncomfortable things to put on the first time. Like everything about this evening is going to be torture for this woman. When she gets in there and finds out that, you know, I don't know how it is down there. I've never been, literally, I've never been to an institution that gave out pillows. So I don't know how it's going to be there. But so many of these things are just shockers. Uh, the first time you go in there and, the, you know, the toilet is steel and there's not a toilet seat on it. If you've lived any kind of a life of privilege, uh, then this is horrific. And I think that this woman is uh, is in for a really, really long night. T uh, Tommy, I know I'm a sadist now with this question. What does it smell like inside a jail? Because we're used to, you know, seeing it in, um, you know, one dimension. But uh, what what is the smell of a jail like? You know, what's funny is that I get this question asked to me more than any other is how bad the smells are. There is a big difference between prison and uh, and jail. Nobody respects the county jail. They don't live there. They trash it. People urinate on the floor. Uh, people who come in are drunk. It smells like um, excrement. I mean, often urine, um, shame, <laughs> believe it or not. There's this overwhelming sense of uh, of a smell that you probably haven't smelled before. And it usually is just a, an entire room full of people who are bathing in shame. You know, you go in there and you sit down and your, your entire life uh, is unraveling in front of you. That does change how a, a place uh, smells and how the attitude is. It's hard to explain this to someone that hasn't um, done time, but when you walk into one of these facilities, you feel completely different. And the energy of the room changes from minute to minute. If a couple of real jackasses come in, then the, it will change the entire dynamics. And it's, I, I was six foot two, 235 pounds and terrified, you know? So I, I just can't imagine what, what uh, she's going to be looking at this evening. And especially with everyone knowing her, I promise she's getting heckled. Uh, everybody in there is letting her know that they know who she is. This is going to be a tough night. Uh, what you're describing, Tommy, is literally like Friday the 13th to me, but on crack, there's no place less I'd ever want to be <laughs> than in Turner Guilford night, let alone prison potentially for the rest of my life. Um, Lady Cymbeline here arrested at the airport of all places because you remember hearing Charlie's voice saying that they would take off to the airport. Tim Jansen, what are you looking at there? What are you thinking right now at this hour? Uh, 1132. Uh, it was 1008 this evening. It is now 1132 Eastern time. 1008 p.m. Eastern time is when uh, the processing of the papers went through when we, we got the final um, or the initial, I should say, arrest uh, report, the re arrest record. And now at uh, this hour, we are seeing the mugshot. Tim Jansen, what is going on in that um, criminal defense mind of yours? And by the way, Tim, I wanted to ask you, what is it like when you get a call from uh, a client, you know, who says, well, I just got arrested. I was at the airport. I was at the Tallahassee airport. What, what do you do from a criminal defense standpoint? What are your first steps? Well, you call, if you call the bondsman. Bondsman would be able to get the paperwork. You find out, is there a bond, what the charges are? find out who the judge is going to be in first appearance. Then you talk to the family, see if you can get anybody at the first appearance, uh, depending on what the charges are. Uh, family, the judge might want to know ties to the community. You got a nice support. You're not going to flee. Um, and then, um, you know, my thoughts are this. My thoughts are that Jack signed off right after the trial. My thought is that they decided to arrest her immediately after the, the guilty verdict. Uh, because they put this warrant and an out of county warrant holder. The grand jury meets tomorrow or Wednesday, so she hasn't been indicted by a grand jury. So they decided after that jury verdict to put a warrant out and a hold for her. Um, and I think we all thought that might happen, but I never thought it would happen that quickly. To tell you the truth, that was pretty quick. Mm. Um, 
Katie Cool Lady, and then we'll get back to Carl, and then back. I can't get enough of Tommy Scoville tonight. The color that he brings to this is invaluable. Uh, Kara Leslie here, Katie to you. I want Wendy in prison more than Donna. I want Wendy's smug look wiped off her face. Katie, do you think that that is the feeling among people who have followed this case for nine plus years? Do you think they want Wendy caught just as badly as they do Donna or Charlie? Yeah, I think so. You know, I, I, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. I mean, I think everybody wants all of them, you know, except for maybe Harvey, you know, um, held accountable. I, I, you know, for different reasons. I mean, Wendy has a much longer life ahead of her. So, I mean, it's Donna, you know, but then you look at Donna and you think this is how you're going to go out. This is how your life's going to be for the duration going from some high rise condo in Miami that you wanted that glitz and glamor life into prison for the, literally the rest of her, your life. I'm looking at this mugshot thinking this is the last time she'll have blonde hair. When we see her in a court of law, she'll be totally gray. It's overwhelming. Kate, yeah. Katie, what's it like for you to see this photo? Uh, you're very emotional, but what's it like for you to actually see this picture? I saw somebody in the chat and I'm glad I so somebody said that I'm, I'm seeing like a slight smile or the beginning of a little smile on her face. I, I don't know. Sometimes when you put a camera in some of somebody's face, they smile, but I don't really have any emotion at all. I seeing that I, I certainly don't feel sorry for her. I'm just relieved. Yeah. I'm it's relieved she's out of the way. It's interesting you say that because when I first saw the photo, I was expecting a much more like glum look and she doesn't look as bad, let's say, as I thought she would look or as like discouraged as I thought she would look. Um, shout out to Billy Mayaya. I follow STS from Brussels. Love y'all. Joel, Tim, Carl, Katie, cool lady. Love that. Um, Leo's mommy here to you, Tommy Scoville. Does she go before a judge in Miami or not until she's in Tallahassee? She'll have her first appearance. Tommy, walk us through this process. What are the, what's the next like 12 hours of her life like? You know what? I, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Honestly, it depends because of, of uh, I mean, is she in the, the facility that she got arrested in? Most of the time for me, uh, I was brought some, I mean, I, the only time I ever had to be transported, it was because I was picked up in a different state and had to do the con air thing as a federal inmate. Uh, when I got picked up, it was a little bit different situation because most facilities technically aren't supposed to house federal inmates. They got some kind of deal going. So the way you get treated when you walk into one of those facilities, um, I was always on the next train smoking directly to the shoe, you know, the segregated housing unit. Um, I was walking in the door, the paperwork got filled out without me there. The, the, uh, the, federal the bank robbers get treated really a whole lot different than other people we sort of get whisked by the uh, the lines apparently but uh yeah so it's a little bit it's a little bit different normally what would happen is um you know you would go for your uh, your initial arraignment where the the judge you know reads the charges against you or you know waves the reading of the charges against you either way and uh you enter a plea that's usually how it um has, has worked for me but in the state and where she's at i'm not sure i think they the your, uh, the panel could probably answer that better than I could. And Tommy, real quick, uh, how is Donna ever? How is Donna ever <laughs> going to adjust to the food in prison? What is she going to be served tonight and tomorrow for breakfast? There, uh, for breakfast, she's going to get um, this yellow cornmeal stuff that they make, um, which is just—I don't know what you can call it. They like to call it porridge. It's—it's uh, it's very oh. difficult to get down the breakfasts. Uh, with lunch, it's normally. Uh, oh. like a cat food kind of a sandwich. It's, yeah, you know, bologna or whatever, often ground up. And uh, if not, it's green bologna, not very good. Uh, and they, they serve an awful lot of cabbage you know, in county jail. So you a lot of cabbage at dinner, uh, nothing edible. In all honesty, their goal is to feed you for about a buck 50 a day, right? So you're not getting, you're not getting a great, uh, a great meal in there. I didn't adjust to the food in 13 years. I did everything I could to try to, you know, steal food out of the kitchen and try to make things that were edible. And it was, it's a difficult process. I lost 80 pounds. <laughs> so it's it's oh. tough in there. I swear to God, I'm going to have nightmares from Tommy Scoville. And he's here just to add some uh, color, give us <laughs> an invaluable insight, but he's ruining my life in the process. So um, Carl Steinbeck, 
the interesting piece of all this, of course, is that the reports are, Carl Steinbeck, that she was with her husband, Harvey Adelson. Harvey Adelson was not arrested. Um, he was not booked. What does this tell you, Carl? Well, I think there was the least amount of evidence against Harvey. I think there's enough to get a conviction against him, but I think they're taking a more of a, a one, one at a time type approach here. And I do think that this is a great move, at least. They're going after more Adelsons. This is their strategy that's working very well so far in terms of bringing down not only the uh, the Hitman team, those three that uh, took part in the actual more direct execution of the murder, but also Charlie, who was the uh, the planner uh, in the go-between with the Hitman. And now you have Donna, who is the uh, the one that commanded this to be done. And uh, so I think... I think it's uh, if you look at her mugshot there, th this looks like a guilty person. This this does not look like somebody that was picked up off the street and is bewildered about how they how could they suddenly be arrested for murder one charges. So she knows uh, she also has a little bit of, I think defiance and anger in her in her face there as well. So it's going to be in um, it's going to be interesting to see. Also keep in mind now Charlie has to come up with appeal money. He's going to have to probably hire somebody other than Rashbaum to do the appeal. So you could be talking up to a million dollars there, and now she's got to come up with a million dollars as well. So Harvey's got to scramble to come up with money now. And I'm thinking their condo is going to be going on the market here really soon. Hey, Joel, I got to run. I got to run. Tim, Tim, thank you so much, thank you Tim. Thank so much, Tim. Okay. okay. Uh, all, right. all right. Carl, I got to keep you muted there. Thank Huge shout out to Tim Jansen. He's been sitting here with bad ribs. Uh, love the guy and uh, appreciate everything he has done for us. Just go a few more minutes and then we will start to wrap it up on this monumental night. If you are just joining us, Donna Sue Adelson, the matriarch of the now infamous Adelson family, her son convicted a week ago, Monday, one week later, Donna Sue Adelson arrested either coming or going at the Miami International Airport. It's not clear which way she was headed. Uh, but it is clear that she is now headed uh, to to incarceration tonight. She's at the Turner Guilford Knight Correction Center, otherwise known as the Miami-Dade County Jail. And I can tell you from covering that, full of murders, rapists, the worst type of offenders. They're in there, female killers by her side. Uh, you've heard Tommy talk about this. Not a pleasant place to be. Carl Steinbeck. Wendy is a flight risk from Lady Oaks. Is that true? Followed by this question. Why is everyone assuming Wendy won't be arrested? Flight risk. I think the downside of that is she's got her two boys, but I think they're going to have tabs on her as well where she's not going to be able to flee the country. So don't know what the, the uh, timing of her arrest will be, but I do expect her to be arrested and like I say, I think a lot of it, they may just want to play out and see who's going to flip on whom. But the better the better chance you have of people flipping is the more the co-conspirators that are charged. So arresting Donna is helping improve their percentages of getting more flips. Arresting Wendy would also increase percentages as well. So and Harvey as well. So I, I think that uh, I think they are going to get some production out of this, that uh, they will be able to go after Wendy easier with Donna being arrested and. Maybe they'll have come up with some kind of deal where they all agree to do a certain amount of time just to uh, just to save them all from having to do life without parole. And we're looking at this comment, uh, Katie, cool lady to you. And uh, again, huge shout out to Jim, Tim Jansen. Uh, we were talking before this ever happened tonight about covering the uh, closing arguments for the Caitlin Armstrong trial, as well as the reading of the verdict. That's the only part that's going to be streamed. I think we're going to still plan on doing that, but obviously the landscape has changed with this and we're going to continue to follow this case. By the way, quick programming note tomorrow night, we were going to, and still probably will interview Ryan Fitzpatrick, Charlie Adelson's ex best friend. Uh, he was a witness at this trial. We were going to do that with Tim Jansen, and Monica Jordan, and uh, we will still have him on. I'm going to get with Steve Cohen after this and, and figure out the game plan. But again, Donna Adelson, she will be uh, before a judge in Miami-Dade County tomorrow. It'll be very quick. 
uh, literally a matter of uh, a minute or two. She's just going to speak to the judge, maybe uh, plea one way or the other. Carl, you could explain that a little bit better. And, uh, and then that'll be it with her. But we will get that video and we'll show it to you. Um, but Katie Cool Lady from Natalie here, maybe they were coming back from Italy. Reportedly, they were in Italy during the trial. I mean, I can't imagine going on vacation while your son's on trial for murder. But this family uh, coming <laughs> from them, I don't think it would surprise me. Katie, do you have any insight into this? None. I mean, I've seen it also pop up here and there. I don't know where that came from. I have no intel on that whatsoever. It, but they they operate in ways that we just can't fathom. You know, I mean, this is these are people that thought the way to solve a problem was to gift the patriarch of the family for his 70th birthday present a murder of their grandson's dad. So I, I, I can't even fathom like what they would do or how they would think or I, I just maybe they were in Italy scoping it out for like a place to disappear to. I don't know. Uh, SJM, that's crazy. If they were on vacation in Italy, I just can't imagine that. Um, Carl Steinbeck, just walk us from a legal standpoint. The next, you know, 12 hours in Donna Adelson's life, she's going to appear before a judge for her first hearing. What's going to happen, Carl? Well, it's going to be a, like they were saying, a pretty quick process and they're going to be bringing her back up to Tallahassee. That's a long drive. I don't think they're going to fly her. But I think it's going to be a long drive. Maybe she'll be on a van with other prisoners as well. And sometimes they have to go county to county, and it can actually take a long time. I know that sometimes the fed, federal uh, marshals do that. So it, it's just going to be very, very, I, I think, a time of uh, for her to really think through what she's done and what she's caused and all the misery. Think of all the misery she's caused for other people besides herself and for those that are younger, her own grandkids. And uh, it's just it's just a wrecking ball of of just disgusting shame and, and uh, evilness about everything that she's been doing and uh, how they can live their lives and going to Italy and just having a grand old time is also really bizarre because their son, Charlie, is on trial for his life and he did get life without parole. And they're and they're in uh, Italy. I mean, that just makes no sense. I had did hear reports that they were in Italy as well. So the. Um, the fact that they're coming back now right before the grand jury's meeting does seem sort of really odd timing as well. It's like they have total disconnect with reality on this. And so, um, but she's going to have to come up with an, another lawyer. I don't think the lawyer she had for that uh, interview down at the FBI headquarters in Miramar is the same one that's going to represent her at trial. And so it's, it's going to be very uh, interesting to see who they get as an attorney for her. And so it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of, uh, it's going to be a lot of, uh, like I say, twists and turns, but I, I think we'll, it's going to be probably a few months before we start really seeing any uh, effects in, um, in how the outcome is going to turn. But as I had mentioned to Katie, as she said, I think with Don and Harvey being so up there in their age that if Charlie's not willing to flip while they're alive, as soon as they die, especially Don and now she's charged, I think, I think Charlie's going to go, there's no way I'm spending the rest of my life in, in prison for wendy who uh, has uh, been living it up living the high life and living like she won the uh, some mega lottery so i, I think that's really going to be um the latest part of when he's willing to hold out and not flip but i think there's a chance he could flip within the next few months while she's still alive but uh remains to be seen but it's going to be exciting to see how it rolls out so many moving parts um captain tommy Ray of Light says, Donna looks to me like she's taking a handful of Xanax. Can you get anxiety medication when you go into the gym? Can you say, I'm just overly anxious? Will they give you that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've gone in there with prescriptions for, for medications like that. You can go in there and say, I'm feeling really anxious. They go, of course you are. You're in prison. Uh, they, you know, they'll come by and talk to you tomorrow from psych. Yeah, they're not too concerned about things of that nature. Um, if, you know, if, if you take something like Xanax on the street, they will step down to a non-narcotic version of something, um, and, uh, and give you something to take the edge off, but you're definitely not getting anything that is narcotic. So benzodiazepines are out, uh, are out. There's no tranquilizers. Now, 
you know, she just showed up. She might be on a handful of Xanax, right? But that's going to stop <laughs> really quickly. They don't, uh, they don't continue to give you your, uh, you know, your benzos when you get in there. Anything narcotic is now gone. I don't care if you're in pain, whatever, all that stops. Man, oh man, oh Manischewitz. That's uh, very, very, very scary. Um, let's start to wrap this up. Um, I really appreciate First and foremost, Tim Jansen coming on. The guy has been our MVP. Uh, we're going to continue, obviously, to stay on this. Um, Carl Steinbeck, what do you think? Um, you talked about it, but I just want to kind of hammer it home. Um, where does Wendy fit in all this? What do you think is next for Wendy Adelson in this? Obviously, we know now that Don is in custody. Um, we were talking about how. Donna must have been looking over her shoulder. Is Wendy now the next one with a swivel, with a swivel head, looking all around, wondering when her day might come? Right. I, I really think they're going to go after Wendy. I think that their arguments to the jury of uh, Charlie's case, they were really proving that they were all behind this. And Wendy was involved as well. There's a couple days of testimony on just Wendy's actions that they did not bring forward. But if they did bring that forward, they have, a, I think, a really good case against Wendy as well, that there's no doubt in my mind that with the right prosecutor, you'd get a conviction. And so I think with uh, with Wendy's particular case, when the when the when Georgia argued in her closing that Jeff Lacasse was framed by her, that to me was really telling because they really believed she was that key and instrumental in this case that you're willing to set up a great guy like Jeff Lacasse to be a fall guy for murder and you did it for eight months that shows how nasty and evil and and well thought out this was to execute the murder of dan markell and so i i don't see them let, letting up and just stopping with her here um with donna's arrest i think that uh they're probably waiting to see who's going to flip to get wendy and that's why they maybe haven't charged her yet but i'm i'm really confident they are going to charge wendy it's just a matter of when do you think the there's any are... outside chance that she already cut a deal? <laughs> is there is there any chance she's not in there because she already turned in her mom and cut some kind of deal behind the scenes? Yeah, I, I, that is a possibility, but I don't see that really happening. I think they're just waiting till the worst outcome comes, which is their arrest. And that's why I think arrests are so important for breaking up conspiracies. And this is going to help, you know, unravel some of the conspiracy now, because now Charlie's in the position of, gosh, I got to save mom. I've already just blown, you know, my chance to uh, be uh, let out of prison, let on out of jail, excuse me. And uh, his his whole concocted story was so ridiculous. And that really also puts her up and in, in, in not having a valid defense. I mean, what's her defense going to be? The same thing as Charlie. And that turned out to be such a disaster. So her defense is not going to be good either because her own words are going to convict her just like they did as Charlie, even though there's not as many words for her, her actions on the bump and all that kind of stuff. All she can need is a little bit of evidence and you bring all this other evidence that they had for it. I guarantee if she was a co-defendant at Charlie's trial, she would have, it, it, the verdict would have been just as quick against her as it was Charlie. Fascinating. Uh by the way, uh, big shout out to Copper Horse from the great state of New Jersey and Frankie Figs, who both worked hard behind the scenes tonight to help us with this breaking news story. I said it once. I'll say it again. I'll say it a million more times. Best guess, better community. Uh, look at this comment from Toronto, Canada, the home of the Markells. Toronto watching. Excellent news. Peter Newton, thank you for tuning in from the home of Dan, Phil, Ruth, and Shelly Markell. Uh, Catalina says, doesn't look like she's been crying at all. Just give me some Pepto. I'll be fine for the night. I don't even think you're allowed to have that. Um, Tommy Scoville, can you have Pepto, Bismol? I'm going to save the last word for Katie Cool Lady. Can you have Pepto in jail? And Tommy, your final thoughts. You've been following this case. Um, what are you thinking tonight? Is this just a, a tragic ending? Um, or is this, in essence, just the beginning of a life filled of just pure hell for this family, the uh, Adelsons. The uh, yeah, the uh, the hell is just starting. I mean, it really is. The the obviously the takeaway is 
that these these poor kids are losing everybody, right? I mean, they're losing everybody, and that's that's a crying shame. But this is what these people did, and they did think they were above the the law. You couldn't write a script like this and have anybody in Hollywood buy it, right? It's so damn ridiculous that this dentist is out there trying to act like a gangster, you know, setting all of this stuff up like he's some kind of a criminal. It's the dumbest thing I ever saw in my life. This case is fascinating, but it's just an ego of one family that's staggering, right? That. This guy's just something that's in the way and to be killed so that they can just get visitation out of the way and uh, live where they want. It's the sickest crap in the world. It's hard not to curse at. It really is. They call me a criminal. <laughs> By the way, we had Tommy on the other night with uh, one of the former heads of the Latin King gang. It was an amazing episode. Tommy, just for those who weren't there, what's Charlie's life like going to be in prison um, from now till uh, the end of his time? How is he going to... What's the metamorphosis going to be from tough guy to what? You know what? It's going to happen really, really quick. If he's a tough guy, they're going to find that out in the first two days he's there. And if he's not, they're going to find that out just as fast. And uh, it's it's amazing. You know, I don't know the women's prison. I know the guy's prison. And they, they call it a gut check. He's going to be there 40 seconds. And they're going to send somebody into that cell to see if, if he's willing to fight for himself. And it's just the way it is. It's it's a sick, disgusting system. I was in it for 13 years. I don't condone any of it, but the violence in there is so unbelievable. You know, if this is not a guy that lived that life, he's about to. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. He's going to be in it. And he's going to be, the violence is just a part of every day in there. It's bad but true. By the way, please follow me on Twitter, at Podcast STS. That's where I put out show times, and we might be doing some unusual programming tomorrow in light of this. You can also follow me on Instagram at surviving the survivor. Uh, please listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Those audio numbers really help us. So if you're in the car and you can listen and give us five stars, that is a massive boost to our program. It helps us a lot. Joel doesn't know this yet, but he might be on core TV in the AM. So tune in. I'm um, unlike Tommy Scoville. I'm a fragile soul and uh, it's going to be tough for me to, um, <laughs> I need my beauty rest, Tommy. Uh, by the way, Tommy, someone in the chat, the COE got rid of it. I had it up there. They're yelling at me for my lip smacking. I can never win. Tommy is my muscle. The guy served time. He will come find you. Don't mess with me. I will stick Tommy Scoville on you. That's it. Um, that's, that's it. it. That's for real, man. I'll find where you live. That's it. That's it. Uh, threats right here on STS. Katie Cool Lady, you are cool because you came on. You're cool for many reasons. Love you. Uh, met you for the first time up there. Outstanding coverage. Thank you to Diane. Katie Cool Lady, you get the final thoughts today about the entire Megilla here. You got the Markells on the one side that it, it appears they're finally getting justice. On the other side, you've got this family literally ripping themselves apart. What are you expecting next? What are your thoughts? Okay, I got three things for you. One is, everybody out there, listen to Carl Steinbeck. I've been saying that for weeks. He's called everything on this case 100%. So listen to him, pay attention to Carl Steinbeck. Second thing is, today, I went back and listened to Jeff Lacasse's police interview. People that are interested in the psychology of this twisted family, it's all there. Jeff Lacasse is a psychiatric social worker, and it's astounding how much he called this family so early on in his police interviews. It's fascinating to listen to. And the third is there's an X factor we haven't been talking about here tonight, which is we don't know what's in the phone calls between Charlie and Donna and hundreds of hours of phone calls from jail. And I doubt that in all those hundreds of hours that there is not something in there that implicates Donna and or Wendy. So we got to stay tuned for that too. Both. Uh, it was a historic night tonight. You are looking right now at a mugshot of Donna Sue Adelson arrested this evening at Miami International Airport. The circumstances still unclear whether she was returning from a vacation in Italy. That's what some say. Or whether she was trying to leave to go elsewhere. We still don't know. We will have more information Please, again, follow me at Podcast STS on Twitter at Podcast STS and on Instagram at Surviving the Survivor. We will have the very latest information and a brand new show, maybe a couple of them tomorrow, because that's how we roll. Huge, huge shout out again to Tim Jansen, who's been our MVP. 
Big shout out to Carl Steinbeck, Jury Trial Mentor. Jury Trial Mentor. That is his YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, Carl has amazing analysis. You've got, uh, what is the official, Tommy? Is it just Lifeboat, Tommy? It is. It's the Lifeboat. The Lifeboat. Tommy does uh, God's work. He is helping people in need of sobriety, and uh, they go on his channel, Lifeboat, and uh, he is a recovering addict. He helps other people in recovery. Uh, he has really redeemed himself since being incarcerated and it just goes to show you can turn your life around unless perhaps you're an Adelson and you're never getting out of prison. Um, even in there though, you can get, you can find you redemption. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Katie, cool lady, Katie, thank you for everything. Katie, what is the official name of your channel also? Is it just your name? I think so. You know, you'd think I'd know at this point, I think it's Katie, cool lady, YouTube, I think is what it is. At Katie. YouTube. And Katie's story is amazing. She survived a lot. She's a survivor of, um, she, you know, she's a victim's advocate. Her sister was murdered. Her story is incredible. So check her out. Uh, Joel, have fun doing your headshots with Carm tomorrow. That'll be fun. That is for the book cover. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to that person up there for letting us be right about this. Cause I probably jumped the gun by a little bit, but um, we had, as I said, three independent sources and tonight we can confirm Donna Adelson is behind bars in Miami-Dade County. Until tomorrow, love you, America. Love you, Tallahassee. Love you, Moscow, Idaho.